Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monsters Den. Today, it's a review day here on the channel. You're going to get two of them back-to-back -back episodes here on this Thanksgiving evening for those of you here in the U.S. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, we recorded these earlier in the week because we did want to bring you some uh, content this week. After you've done, finished filling your belly with turkey or stuffing, whatever else it is you've eaten, uh, you know, so, uh, but again, because we recorded these earlier, we haven't done all the eating yet, but you guarantee you when this is running Thursday evening, we will be knee deep in it. So uh, <laughs> before we get started today, uh, let me welcome Jamie Laszlo, Craig Kaminsky, Chris Allo, and all the way from Scotland in the middle of the night, it is Davey Gallagher. What's up, gentlemen? Nice Cats in Space hat. I just noticed that. Thanks yeah, they've only started selling these, so um, they're doing it for Christmas. So Very nice. Great band. If you well, want one, get your orders in. There you go. I'm going to have to do that. So uh, a lot of you have been asking, uh, guys, there's some great new horror films that have come out recently. When are you going to review them? Well, we're bringing you two of them today. So uh, first off, we're going to tackle the brand new or fairly new Zach Krieger directed film called The Barbarian, which has been streaming on HBO Max. Is that where I saw this? Is that where this was? Yes. Been HBO Max. So uh, this is an interesting little horror film that's kind of one of those, uh, if you watch the trailer, you're not quite sure what you're going to get. Maybe you have a couple of opinions, but then you start watching and a little bit into the movie, you're like, all right, this is a little bit different than what I thought. So uh Chris Allo, kick us off with your thoughts on Barbarian. Yeah, this what I like. I'm a big trailer guy. I watch trailers all the time. I love trailers. This was definitely one of those ones that I liked the trailer because it gave almost nothing away in, right. in the movie. Um, you know, other than the you find out that the guy and the girl are both double booked at an Airbnb. That's about it. Um, but overall, I, I like this movie. I didn't love it. Uh, I was entertained. Um, yeah, just to wrap up the the plot real quick, guy and a girl are double booked at a, a house, and you find out that there's a monster in, living in the house, basically, and it attacks uh, the people in the house. And the monster is uh, some weird, mutated, <laughs> old, creepy mom that looks like she's a leftover from uh, the original or the remake of The Hills Have Eyes, with big floppy saggy tits and uh i gotta be honest fellas i don't know about you and i know i wasn't supposed to but this movie made me laugh like three or four times when the big sloppy spitty mom jumped out and her tits are flopping i laughed i thought this was kind of goofy um but it's entertaining that's all i was looking for i didn't know where it was going i, I didn't know where this movie was fucking headed but i was i was entertained uh, and that's really all uh, all I was looking for. And it, this thing made a fucking killing at the box office. Yeah. Uh, according to the internet, it, the budget was four and a half million. It made forty five million. That's unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable business. And um, you know, if you're looking for something different, uh, this is worth checking out. I think you know, it's not it's not amazing, but I was entertained. Yep, I hear you. And just. If you're watching, we like to say at the beginning, but we kind of forgot. Spoiler alert, uh, oh, if yeah. you haven't seen this film, we're probably going to give away some stuff here. So yeah. uh, if you haven't watched this movie, you may want to pause this and go check it out first. But uh, Right, but also, you know, watching a movie review of a movie you haven't seen yet is kind of like, right, yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't be <laughs> doing that if you're planning on, on watching it. Right, so right, right now, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I think most of us are going to be like, at least uh, is somewhat positive on this film. So if you have any interest in it at all, go check it out. It's probably worth your time. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop right there. Uh, move on to Jamie. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I did not see the trailer for this one. Me neither. But we went to go see Jaws in 3D when it came out this summer. And I saw this poster in the hallway and it was kind of hit me. I'm like, ooh, that looks like it's going to be good. As simple as it is. Yeah. It still looked like it was going to be. It kind of reminds me of your T-shirt for the Monsters Den a little bit. Put the killer in there instead of the chick. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so I went in knowing nothing. It starts like you know where it's going to go. Yeah, you know, it, it starts off like a romantic comedy, and I got I kind of got anxiety watching it because I wanted these two to hook up. 
I'm like, I think I could watch this just as a rom com, and just you know, I hate that bad things are happening to these two people. I hate it. I just, I just want them to hook up and have kids and have a wonderful life. <laughs> but you know, you, you think the dude spoilers you think the dude is going to be the psycho you're just waiting for it by the numbers shit here and that's not what happens at all you know it he goes down the cellar and you're like okay he's down there doing something wrong oh no he's a victim i don't there's a lot of questions i have in this movie uh it, it, not everything has to make sense but you know she goes down to get him and he comes running down the hallway and he's like someone bit me She's like, let's leave. No, we got to go back to where the person bit me. <laughs> yeah, what? <that> Why <laughs> do you need to go back to where you got bit? Go leave, dude. So little quirky things like that didn't make sense. Uh, a lot of the ending didn't make sense, but that's all right. But then it takes uh, a turn there. Boom. And then it takes another turn where uh, you got this dude, uh, the actor, Justin Long, who was the Mac guy. Hey, I'm a Mac. And then you had the nerdy guy next to him. No, I'm a PC. You remember those commercials? Yeah, he's the Mac guy. Um, he appears out of nowhere. And then he's this douchey guy, you know, um, who possibly raped a girl. And uh, his life is getting ruined. He was an actor. So what this movie is to me is a little bit of a merge between the A24 movies and the Jordan Peele social commentary type movies and it's blended 100%. together it's got this a24 style but it's got this me too kind of message you know she thinks the guys are rapists in the beginning but he's not and then she meets the rapist who's really rapist i'll tell you my favorite scene in the whole thing is in the bar where you don't know if this dude raped the girl or not and he's drunk telling his buddy you know me i'm just a little forceful and you're sitting there going this fucker did it yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the scariest moment in the whole movie. Right? Yeah. So um I like that he uh you know at the end the, the main girl who's quite a cutie uh gets shot and he's like I'm gonna help her and it feels like he wants to help her to make up for what he did to the actress in raping her. But then three minutes later he throws her off a building. <laughs> So, I mean, like a, a leopard, you can't change a leopard spots. Is that the message there? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, and, and then when he throws her off, you got, you got the monster like diving after her and they both survived the fall. And you're like, well, that was kind of sloppy. But it's not a perfect movie. Not everything uh, makes sense. But like Chris says, it's entertaining all the way through. And why did this person, th this woman... Okay, so everyone in her family tree is a brother and sister. Why does that give you superpowers? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And Why does it make tall. her extra tall? Really? I don't know. No. So, and and then the and then the and the guy, the, the rapist guy, he buys his house, and it's a really. It, it, Why did he buy it in such a shitty neighborhood to renovate? But it and actually used to be it used to be a really nice neighborhood. Did he uh, buy it when it was a nice neighborhood? I don't know, but it, it I don't know, but and why is no one breaking into this house? It's the only nice one on the block. Yeah. Yeah. But I did How like do you in not the know that he's got these underground fucking tunnels. Yeah. Under his house. But to me, the most ridiculous part is when he escapes the tunnel and he runs into the fucking old man in one of the rooms. And he's like, oh, oh, what? You you want a glass of water? Oh, well, no, you, you want this? Like, get the yeah. fuck out of the house, dude. Yeah. Would you be like, yeah. who the fuck are you? You got to go. I'm running out of here. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? The and I also, this is a huge pet peeve of mine, but obviously the producers of this movie have never fired a gun in real life. Those gunshots were the worst sounding gunshots <laughs> I have ever heard in the history of cinema. They sounded worse than a fucking cap gun. It was a cap gun noise, wasn't it? I was I even mean, it was thinking like, that are you myself. Fucking serious? Never, I was never heard a gun. Have you never even been close to somebody who held a real gun or a bullet? Yeah. Like, never seen a Charlie Bronson movie. It was a fucking cap gun. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, though, Chris, that whole scene did get was worth it for one thing and one thing only: the labels on the videotapes that the old guy keeps. <laughs> that was pretty funny. They they like, were hilarious. Screamer, so it, leader. 
Won't stop that's, crying. That's a sort of a slight sure. Irish accent. Irish how about the VHS tape of uh, How to Be a Parent being played nonstop for 40 years? And it looks like a DVD still being played. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't even think of that. But yeah, that's a good good, good call. Yeah. yeah. I just like how they, in the beginning, up. how she went into the house at night, not knowing it was a shitty neighborhood, and then coming out during the day and going, holy fuck. Fuck where that was nicely done. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. really didn't know at all, right? Yeah, that it was a shitty neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. The impression that I kind of got with that is that years ago it was a really nice neighborhood. But as people started to move away, right. and this guy who lived at the house who obviously was bringing in people to, to be killed and whatnot, I think he started mining from the houses around or something like that. And then people stopped yeah. coming around there. I don't know. They don't really explain a lot of that too well. Which yeah, you just get that that one scene, don't you, with uh, the neighbor from I guess it would be the seventies or eighties, who says to him, you know, neighborhood's going downhill. Boy, it wasn't it yeah. wasn't wrong, was it? Oh, it was. <laughs> it's like a hurricane went through that place. Yeah, it's, but, it's awful. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely awful. Craig, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I like that. It. Uh, the, I mean, uh, some good parts and bad parts. I like that in the beginning as you guys have already said that you kind of know what you kind of think which way this is going and that the woman's making all the right decisions you know she's hesitant to come into the house because i don't know this guy i don't want to share space with him when she comes back from her interview the homeless guy is chasing her down and it's like oh shit got to get inside the house and you know i mean which makes sense turns out that guy was actually trying to help her yeah. you know to to tell her get out of uh, get out of here you know and uh the the surprise of uh you know Keith the you know the the housemate you know what happens to him because again we you know, you kind of figure that like that this guy's kind of a a weirdo and you know she when she goes to bed and her her door opens up slightly and it's like uh oh this guy's you know going to try to take advantage of her but uh and the, and it just kind of it it goes. Then you introduce a Justin Long character, you know, of uh, being canceled. I guess you would call it. You know, for for uh, you know, he he's saying he didn't you know do date rape or whatever on on someone. The funny uh, one of the funny parts that I thought was uh, you know Chris had said with uh, parts that were funny was when uh, Justin Long's character realizes that his house is now twice as many cubic feet and he's just going along tape measuring things he sees like bloody cages just totally ignores them and he's like just looking at things he goes into the room with a you know a scuzzy mattress and a tripod with a camera completely ignores it it's like wow i can get look how much more space i can get for this house i mean i i i definitely laughed at that you know with uh, you gotta wonder how long he's had this house for that he's never been in it right right yeah or or, yeah, or I, how much of a wise investment this was you know or i guess he grew up there i guess you're supposed to assume that he grew up there because he went out to a bar that night and, and he then knows he, the guy in the neighborhood yes yeah, he, so. he said he wasn't yeah. going to see his mom when obviously he was close to home uh, yeah yeah, yeah. But uh, but it, it it does kind of unravel uh, a little bit at the end. I mean, I, I the one one of the parts I didn't like was that, you know, when when she does finally escape the house and she comes upon the police and the police are not remotely helpful to her. And, and of course, I thought, do you would as a policeman, would you want to be that cop that didn't believe this woman who escaped, you know, or something where it would be bound, where if, if her story is true, that it would come out that, you know, you were not, you didn't help her at all. And you didn't, you know, uh, believe her, take her back there and say that there's another guy that's held prisoner there or anything. And immediately they say, you know, take your hands off the car, miss. Well, you mean you don't have any identification, you know, because they, they, they think she's a crackhead because she's all scuzzed up from however long she's been in that uh, hole in 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 the cellar so uh and then at the end when you know the laws of physics are broken with you know she goes off first the the mother jumps after her and then somehow lands first to cushion her fall you know it's like something out of uh wily e. coyote or bugs bunny or you know oh, or yeah. something you know so uh and that he, he and like and you sort of think that he as, as uh, jamie had mentioned that he redeems himself you know sort of at the end but then it's like, no, you, this guy has to, he has to die. And of course he gets killed in a horrific manner, uh, you know, by, by the mother, uh, right, right at the end. 
also maybe the another the uh the, the guy the the, the homeowner when Justin Long comes upon him. All of a sudden, now this guy has a break of conscience that he decides to kill himself after yeah, that was... decades of this going on. And that, and you know, you come across one guy who says, "Oh, you sick! Oh, look at all these videotapes. This is what you're doing." And he, and he decides right there, you know what? I'm just going to kill myself after after this has been going on for 40 years. So uh, that was you know a little thrown off too, but. Regardless, I st I still was at least reasonably entertained by this. I'm glad I saw it on HBO Max. You know, uh, preferably to see it that way instead of uh, in the in the theater. But it was it was good. It, I think it was fine for what it was. Davey, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's one of the one of the more fun movies I've seen this year. Um, and I love that Jamie mentioned the Jordan Peele connection. Because Zach Kreger was um, was in the um, the whitest kids, you know, the comedy trip. They had their own sitcom, um, so again, it's it's um, it kind of leads to that that kind of Jordan Peele thing coming from the comedy world, but being able to take your skills at comedy and turn them into drama, um, because they're both very much about timing. Um, horror films and comedy films both very much rely on timing, and I think this is a real great example of timing. Um, and set up and pay off, which again is so much so important to both comedy and um, to to drama uh, and specifically horror. So you get lines from um, from our main actress um, uh, Georgina Campbell, um, who I thought was a brilliant um, lead, mm -hmm. um, and you would never know she was English. Um, she's she's oh. so convincing. Yeah, she's in um, All My Friends Hate Me. Quite a recent uh, British movie. She's uh, she's all over British TV. Um, fantastic. Um, so it was great to see her get a, a lead like this that I hope propels her onto bigger things. Um, but she gets a line early on in the movie where her and um, Bill Skarsgård are talking about uh, relationships, and she says, "Yeah, that's my problem. I always go back and try and try and help them and try and change them." And that comes back because that is her downfall ultimately puts her in jeopardy. She does go back and try and save Justin Long. Yeah. Whereas if she just left things, she could have walked away no problem. As it is, she gets away and we would get probably a bit of a happy ending than we should have gotten really. But um, Justin Long's character I thought was absolutely terrific in that um, we are, first of all, we're kind of con conditioned to believe that he's a Hollywood douchebag just because we want to believe that that's what people like him are like. Um, so we're kind of already against him. And it very much reminded me of another Justin Long film called Tusk, if anyone's seen that, oh, the yeah. Kevin Smith movie. Um, very much um, similar to that. Um, he plays a, movie, man. Yeah, and he plays a very similar douchebag type character who has a kind of fate like uh, one of the freaks from Freaks. Um, but he he comes into it and you think, yeah, you're going to get the cliche, like, oh, I'm, you know, is he that bad? Maybe it's going to reverse the the trend of toxic masculinity. But no, he's he is every bit as bad as you think. And you get these clues via, as Jamie said, probably the most disgusting scene in the movie is the nightclub where he basically tells his friend, yeah, I did it, without really saying it. And then you get the, as Craig mentioned, the scene where he's just measuring the house, completely <laughs> void of empathy. Um, so that shows you that he doesn't care about, you know, what's going on here. What's, you know, he's just focused on, oh, this might get me at my money problems. So he's, he's not changed at all. And then you get that scene around the campfire with the, the homeless guy where he is trying to convince himself that or does one bad thing make you a bad person or can you still be a good person and he's talking about the rape so at this point there's no doubt there's no doubt that he did did commit rape there's no doubt in my mind um so it's very much a set up and pay off kind of movie um that uses the tropes of horror 
um, and including some tropes that I really love. I love long cavernous things that you get to investigate, like uh, as above, so below from about 10 years ago. I love those kind of movies um, where you just, you know, what's around the next corner. Um, I like the old guy um, who we see as a slightly younger guy doing the, the shopping. Um, he's um, Joe Chill from Batman Begins, if anybody remembers him in that. So. Um, always, always plays creeps and things. He's got one of those unfortunate faces, a bit like uh, Jackie Earl Haley. He's never going to be a romantic lead. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I just thought it was a really, really well done film. Um, that takes on um some cliches, turns them in their head. I think it's a fantastic transition where you think, you know, you've just seen the monster, and then boom, all of a sudden you're in LA and you're seeing the coast, and it looks gorgeous, and you're like, what the if he's something he's singing a song and driving yeah down. it's like you're in a different movie all of a sudden mm-hmm. you know yeah. you've went black and white to color in the wizard of oz all of a sudden you know it's <laughs> completely different um and i love the idea of using bill scars guards as um as keith at the start of the movie because we're, we're also conditioned to think that he's going to be the creep because he's played by bill scars guards yeah. and that's obviously pennywise the clown so we're, we're waiting on him to be creepy um, so when he turns out to not be that and he's doing everything in his power to not be creepy and that makes him almost creepier, that makes him almost more suspect, he's trying to be the polite guy and he's trying, as long as you feel safe and well, I didn't want to open the wine without you here in case you yeah. thought I drugged it and, you know, mm-hmm. all these little things you're thinking oh, he, he must be up to something but no, they completely subvert that they completely subvert that um, yeah, there are there are moments where it jumps logic and says, uh, we need to be a horror movie at the end of the day. So we do get a slightly silly, uh, we do get some fun cliches that are slightly silly. I mean, uh, some of them are intentional laughs, you know, like, eh, she's not been in here in 15 years. She'll say in here. <laughs> <laughs> straight away you know she's not been in here in 15 years three seconds later there she is um so yeah it was just a real fun time um i don't think it's it's um it quite deserves the the massive praise that it's getting as and you know oh you need to see this cold it's film of the year material kind of thing mm-hmm. but what i do think it is is it's just a much more intelligent version of um the uh the cinema horror that, that we tend to get these days and boy will we see that in a couple of minutes time when we cover the other film um but yeah this is um as jamie said very much in the jordan peele mode um i'd put it along with those kind of movies like nope and yeah what's the other ones so so and uh, yeah and another one yeah so yeah i'd say it's uh it's well worth anybody's time I'm looking forward to seeing what what um, Zach Kreger does next. It reminded me of Cabin in the Woods a little bit, to where you think it's one thing, and it turns into another thing. Yeah, and then there's things under the house. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. And that, you know, I I watched the trailer before I saw it, and the trailer led, I think, leads you to believe that Skarsgård's character is up to no good and yeah. so basically she she falls into this situation she decides to stay there for a night and he turns out to be like a serial killer and everything that's going on downstairs is him bringing people in but you after like a couple minutes you're like wait a second maybe it's not him and one of my questions is like all right so how long have they been renting out this house and obviously the dude living downstairs has been basically you know bringing in and capturing people for the mother down there so, like, does the rental agent not know that there's some weird shit going on here? I mean, and, and, and there maybe not to rent it. And I guess because it's the area, and obviously we see that the cops are disinterested. But right, according if we're just going by the VHS tapes, wouldn't there be at least fifty people or more that have okay. disappeared after renting this house? Like, does right does the Airbnb not think it's weird that they never get a good review because? That the people get eaten or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Who's maybe he, who's maybe he used back? to bring them back. Yeah, maybe he used back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, 
Um, maybe he used to bring people back instead because um, I got the feeling that he was maybe dying of cancer or something. He didn't look just old. That's yeah, what you know? I, the impression I got. Yeah. Or he was picking yeah. up women at like the gas station and things like that. Not necessarily yeah. that were living. So, in so, so I didn't really true. get the impression that, that they were all rentals and they'd be investigating that property in particular. Um, but you're right, there are, there are definite jumps in logic where it does ask you to say, hey, it's you know, it's, it's only a, it's only a I mean, if there was ever movie. a movie with built in a capabilities to do 50 or 60 sequels, right? There's all those videotapes. You could, you, there, there's your sequels. Or yeah. You could make them all prequels rather. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah, one of them escaped, but then it's like, right when you're about ready to start the car, uh, yeah. it got grabbed. Exactly. You know, yeah. Yep. There's yeah. a lot they can do. Yeah. I, I thought it was really well made. I, I kind of like the fact that it turned into kind of like a monster film. Kind yeah. of, sort of and a little fun fact so the uh the actor who played the the mother was actually oh, a man guy. yes yeah. which is crazy mm -hmm. right um pretty cool but yeah I, some some good gore right uh i thought the acting was good uh yeah you know there were some hokey parts to it but uh, i was pleasantly surprised because it, it was not the film that i was expecting and i think that was i was okay with that you know, I like sometimes where you go in and you you get something completely different. So I yeah. personally, I give it a thumbs up. Is it the greatest yeah, thing definitely. this year? No, but I I thought it was pretty damn good. You know, I, and I thought I, they I made 1981 or whatever look pretty good. They even changed the dimension of the screen from yeah. four Damn. four by three. And there was so there was, was actually like a, a lot of good filmmaking in terms yeah. of visual storytelling where she's on her own and isolated, and the 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 shot tells you that. Um, you know, and and lighting comes in from different directions to really reflect the situation. You know, it, it was a very well done film overall, um, and it had a, a very much a, a sense of urban decay or suburban decay, I guess. In this case, that was real. Um, I read that was that was a real suburb of Detroit. Yeah. Looked, Before knowing that. anything, to me, it yeah. looked like Detroit because I'd seen shit like this on TV. Yeah, where there's yeah. neighborhoods that are just abandoned and burned out, and yeah filled with graffiti so that's what it looked like to me i was like oh shit. yeah i mean it just looked it just looked absolutely desolate didn't it, it just looked i mean yeah i remember seeing pictures of from michael moore documentaries and and when they had the big water thing up in flint michigan yeah. things but you know wow just the idea that people oh, could people have to live in those conditions you know so maybe i'll get you know, a little feel of uh castle Stuart gordon's castle freak like a little bit oh yeah good cool. little, yeah, yeah a little bit a little bit yeah. Although no Jeffrey Combs, so it does no, lose yeah. points there. Robert Crampton, yeah, your boyfriend. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And for those who don't know, I think the reason that the movie's called Barbarian is because the the house is on Barbary Street, and hence, if you live on Barbary Street, technically, you're a barbarian. So uh, I think that's where we get the. And I, I had read on Wikipedia that it was a just a the title Barbarian was just a working title. Yeah, and then they just left it. Well, they threw in Barbary Street right, though, yeah. where they see that. So yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. So we got pretty positive uh, feedback on this particular film. So uh, if you've already seen it, let us know what you think down in the comments below. If you have not, and you've sat through this entire uh, review here, you obviously know most of the plot points, but it's still worth uh, going to watch. I watched it twice, actually. I saw it on my own, and then uh, my wife wanted to see it, so I sat down with her again and watched it again. And I, I, I enjoyed it. I think it was, you know, how many it's more, if I, would I watch it again anytime soon? I don't think I need to, but fun, fun film, fun horror film. So there you have it, everybody, but stay tuned. We got another one called It's Chris one. Yeah, I was going to say, right, we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. That's right. So we're going to get two tonight. So uh, we are coming back at you with another review, uh, the one that's been asked for every week since it came out. Oh, uh, I thought we were going to do it all at once. No, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna hit stop and come back. So we'll have two separate episodes. So we're going to do, that's okay, you got up in the scene, but Jamie's already given it away. Terrifier 2, coming up next. So stay tuned. We'll be right back at you with another episode of The Monster's Den. Thanks for watching. For Jamie, Craig, Chris, and... Uh, Davey, I am Pete. Well, who that guy is? That guy. Yeah, I've been talking name? to too many people on Zoom screens tonight. I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting names confused. So uh, we'll see you back here with another episode of The Monster's Den. Don't touch that dial. Be right back.